Hi guys and welcome back to The Restoration. On this episode, I do tons and tons of body work on the hood and on the seat pan to get them into their final paint. And I also put a couple more things onto the tractor itself. And if you want to see that, stick around. But first I have to tell you, I was just in the doctor's office and a banana walked in. He said he wasn't peeling well. <laughs> Good one, Jayster. Finally, a fruit joke. Well, I had a couple battle scars from the springs and stuff, so got out the touch-up paint and fixed it. My father had washers in place of a bushing, so I am going to take this piece of scrap metal and make a bushing on my lathe. The diameter is slightly different, but it made it. I made it to fit the the bolt, and here I am painting it. And I had enough paint to actually paint the, another bushing as well. One of the pulley brackets was missing so I went to Home Depot, got some metal and bent it around that pipe that I used to make a crucible out of and now I had to try to figure out how to make these kind of bends that they had on the other one so I thought maybe bend it in the vise and cut it and it absolutely worked and looked exactly like the original. Now, I got it uh, dyed right now blue and I want to make sure I can get it all bent and cut and looking like it. And now I'm going to make it the exact same width. So I went to the bandsaw. Now this isn't the part. This is just the, another part of the brackets that's going to get welded on. But just showing kind of how I cut it down to width. Bandsaw, then grinder, then sander. Unfortunately, guys, I lost the footage of me finishing making that bracket and welding it on. But here she is. Last year when I painted this, it was quite a bit of texture in there because I didn't have the paint then correctly. So I decided to scuff it up and paint it again. Also, I noticed some highs and lows in there. So I decided to get some body filler and get it all sanded and smoothed out so that the paint job turns out really nice. So now it's smooth and ready to paint, but my son told me, he said, if you're not really happy with how it is right now, don't paint it because you spent so much time on it. But I think I can get away with it. There's a couple small flaws I think that the paint will cover up. I decided to use my mini detail gun because one, it had orange in it last and two, it's not super hard to clean. So I put down several light coats, letting it dry between each coat for about 10 minutes and then switched to the hood. Now this hood was in such bad shape with the pitting and rust that I have to do a lot of imperfection filling with this body filler and primer and build, uh, high build primer, sanding between each step and just building it up to cover up all the flaws. Guys, you're getting a Reader's Digest version of this, but there are hours and hours, probably 50 hours into sanding, priming, and filling, and many, many times repeating it. The underside of this hood was in bad shape as well, so once again, it had to be sanded, um, filled, and primed, and painted as well. I didn't know that you could get high bill primer and a rattle can but once I did that I bought several and it took about one can to do the inside the front and the back of it so I would do a high build then I would do sanding filling high build filling sanding I did three cans of that and I realized that there are several spots on the underside that's going to need a lot more attention so I get out the heavy duty body filler and get it on there and then get it sanded down. Well now it's uh, sanded again from the high bill. Put a little bit of the uh, red stuff glazing putty into the high, I mean the low spots. And we'll show you the other side. Here on this other side I put in body filler there around there to try to smooth out some of those raggedy lines. Got that sanded down, 
There's a couple spots I can see that's going to be a little low, but we'll get it primed again and resand it. Okay, that's what we got here. So I tried to power sander, but it really didn't work very well. So right back to hand sanding again. Just sanding, sanding, sanding. It's very hard to tell with the contrast, you know, not being much contrast, guys, but it is almost, almost flawless in here. By the time they get some paint on there to be some, a, little, a couple of ripples, but that's where that uh, joined here with welding and I, you know, put some filler over that. A um, couple of more little spots like right there, um, get a little glazing putty on there, get it sanded. But the rest of it where the pits were, that's, that's pretty much all gone. So it's time to get a, a, that body filler in there, a little bit more sanding, and throw, start putting the real primer on there, getting it ready for paint. Well guys, here's what I'm trying to smooth out. You can see that back in there where there were welds and stuff, um, I got a lot of this body filler in there and that is smoothing it out. I don't know why I'm taking this much time. I mean, this is the inside of it, but I just can't not be a perfectionist. Anyway, along here too, there's a couple of little places where there's still a little pitting and you can see that I fill up the pits with the glazing putty and it's a waste of time it's stupidity but for some reason I just can't yeah, know about it there and not try to get it as good as I can possibly get it so anywho's um, more sanding more body filler and by the way the part down in here is feeling as smooth as silk so all that pitted stuff has been filled in and now it's starting to feel good so I'm right in here just trying to get the last bit of it and then we'll get some primer on it well there she is um, Got that all smoothed out as best I could, and uh, you can really tell how thin a lot of these spots are that are just covering up imperfections. And uh, now I will um, shoot some primer on there, and that'll again that'll show us some more flaws. Now this, guys, is that automotive primer from Duplicolor that you just stick in. I'm doing a separate video on this, but this is the automotive primer, and it's a really good primer, too. Well, this stuff was old and it got a little chunks in it, but I mixed it up and I'll shoot this out of there and see what happens. I haven't put any thinner in it. It looks, looks pretty good, so see what happens. What you saw me spray in before was the Duplicolor uh, Paint Shop System Primer, and I ran out of that, so I switched over to, I had a can of the Duplicolor Paint Shop Automotive Paint. So I grabbed that and I'm going to be using that as a primer as well. Now it did shoot a little bit different than the primer. I didn't change the tip. I think I had the biggest tip in there and I didn't thin this down at all. But since it was old, I probably should have thinned it. And it came out of there kind of spider webbish, but it did get on there and then laid down. Well, here she is. Not sure how the camera's going to get the texture, but uh that paint 
was a little bit different as far as laying down. It does lay down. It's going to definitely need to be uh, wet sanded or sanded. But um, I think with some thinner in there, it would have came out of there uh, much more better. But it lays down pretty doggone flat. But once again, it's, I'm going to um, get that wet sanded or just sanded and get the top coat on. But that's the paint. And this would need the clear coat on it. But uh, yes, you can use automotive paint in that paint gun. All right. Well, I sanded down that paint, so it's going to be kind of a primer. And right under here, it's very difficult to paint up under there. So I'm going to try to get the little detail gun out, get that painted. Um, also, the sides have been re-sanded. And we're going to try to get this thing with paint on it instead of the tractor paint. So I'm going to do it in steps. After lots and lots of coats of primer and filler and sanding, the paint is finally going on. Well, I notice I can't hit certain parts with that detail gun. So now I pull up my paintbrush and do a little work where I can't get the spray into. So now I lay down like multiple coats, letting it dry like 10 minutes between. I think I put down four or five coats, but I made sure that it covered well and then uh, added more. And this is what it looks like before the paint flowed out and laid down flat. Okay, here's my dilemma. Now, those of you that don't have the gene of uh, perfectionist will not understand this, but this finish in here is probably better than the factory. You can kind of see the reflection on this hood here, but I know I could wet sand it, buff it out, and get it even better. So now I got to figure out do I want to spend another, what, five, ten hours on this, or take it right now and be done with it and Gosh, I wish I didn't have that. Sometimes I wish I didn't have that perfectionist gene. But um, anyway, like I said, you can see the reflection in there. And I just got to figure out, do I want to make it mirror finish or leave it better right now, better than factory finish? So that's what I'm mulling over. While I'm saying that, this finish over here, I kind of rushed on it. And there are some spots you can see there that slight imperfections in it but it's driving me nuts so I'm gonna sand this where those spots are and uh, try to get this one at least as good as what that hood is right now and then go from there so once again here goes some more hours of sanding putting in filler and painting So what happens is, you can see, anything that is shiny is low. So we'll put body filler in that and bring that up, but that's what, the, that's what needs to be done to really get this thing nice and smooth, and so that's what I'm going to do. Taking a good look at this, when I get it scuffed up, now you can kind of see everywhere the shiny there and these little dimples here. You can kind of see that through the paint, you know, little bumps, so, or divots. So I'm going to go ahead and get body filler in there and, like I said, any, anywhere shiny in there needs a little bit of a body filler and sanding. So. More hours and hours of sanding. 
I started off with wanting to touch up just two parts. Well, I got quite a few more that I actually touched up and now it's at least going to be to where I'm not so, you know, bothered by it from the little bit of imperfections that are in it. That should take out the big ones where you can really see it. There should be, uh, you know, fairly smooth of a finish when I get done. When you rub your hands on here, I've got it degreased right now, but when you rub your hands on any of these spots on here, you can close your eyes, you can't feel it all. So it's sanded, sanded out pretty smooth. And now, time to get uh, paint on it. Well, I used real thin, I thinned it out so it sprayed nice, and I put about, oh, six, eight coats on it. I'm much more happy with this time around. It's not perfect, but man, the flaws, most of them are well hidden now. Now I decided to get the front pulley assembly back together, and there was a couple of issues with the bushings and it took me a while and I'm telling you this thing is fighting me going back together as much as it fought me getting it apart. Well, those little bushings were a nightmare and I finally figured it out after a little while. It's probably easier just to pull this thing off than I did. So, got it off, got those bushings in and uh, get the rest of this baby together. Now time for this little sub-assembly to go on to the tractor. After I got the, well, I, I took this thing back off, and the reason why is because I saw a couple of dents in here, and once I got this, uh, the, this thing in, the little grill here, it looks so good, I'm like, I don't like the way that the edges of this are right now with the little imperfections. So, once again, that perfectionist gene is killing me. Uh, but I'm going to get some body filler in here, repaint this so you don't see these dents around the edges. Anyway, more work. Ooh, settle down, ladies. It is time for Tractor Chat. Hi, and welcome back to Tractor Chat, the international tractor talk show sensation. For those of you who are just tuning in, you've missed a phenomenal show. Natalie Portman was here. Natalie, thank you for stopping in and teaching us about sealers and paint. Now, everyone knows that Natalie Portman knows primer, but who knew she knew top coats as well? That Harvard degree is not going to waste. My producers are telling me we're running out of time, but I'd like to share this one quick story before we go. I was just having lunch with Kate Winslet, and I said to her, Kate Winslet, what do you prefer? The Case Magnum 250 diesel or gas? And she looked at me with a smile and said, Jayster 1963, the Case Magnum 250 only comes in diesel. And we laughed and laughed because everyone knows that Kate Winslet will only have diesel tractors. Breaking news, this just in. It appears that Renee Zilwiger is having lunch at this moment with two vice presidents from John Deere. Live on that scene is our news correspondent, Chester Chumley III, Jr. Esquire. Let's go to him live and get that report. Chet, can you describe the scene for us? Well, Jaster, the scene here is pure pandemonium. It appears that Renee Zilwiger ordered beef wellington. However, the executives ordered salad, creating quite the ruckus. Chet, that scene could create quite a stir. 
but I'm going to ask my viewers to please remain calm. I know that most are thinking like in 1990 when Morgan Fairchild was seen having lunch with John Deere executives. Most will never forget exactly where they were or what they were doing when Morgan Fairchild announced that she was switching from Ford tractors to John Deere tractors. Let's keep our fingers crossed that Renee Zellweger's lunch is just lunch. And that's all our time today. We'll see you on the next exciting episode of Tractor Chat. I was having lunch with Kate Winslet. Ladies and gentlemen, that that's not what's going on. Chet, that scene could create quite a stir. Chet, that scene could create quite a stir. But I'm going to ask my viewers to please keep calm. In 19... <laughs> I'm going to make you a star, baby.